Welcome everyone. This is Angela Mills who works in the town manager's office. We are now recording to the cloud and I am making town manager Paul Bauckham and the host of this meeting. Thank you for everyone who is attending and thank you to all of our panelists. Have a great meeting everyone. Thank you, Angela. Um, good, good afternoon, everybody. This is our second meeting of the Jones Library Building Committee. Um, and so the first thing we're able to do this because of uh, legislation that the, the uh, general court has passed that allows us to meet virtually. Uh, but there are certain rules that come along that when you meet virtually, which means that we need to make sure that everybody who's present identifies themselves and says they can hear us and we can hear them. And then um, and we try to fix any technical difficulties in the course of the meeting and all votes if there are votes are taken through roll call processes so um, again we'll just identify ourselves and our, our role so i'm paul bachman town manager and i'll call your names off and you can identify so sharon present okay uh, george present okay uh, christine i'm just going to cross my cat my schedule my screen Present. Okay. Um, Sean? Present. And Alex? Present. And Austin? Present. And Anika? Present. So I should note that Anika is the designated town council representative. She has not gone through the formal appointment process, so she hasn't been sworn into but the town council has asked the town manager to appoint. So that makes it pretty clear uh, what's going to happen. So we wanted her to be part of this meeting as well, but she can't formally vote, to, but she will be a participant uh, after the council's meeting on January 24th. Uh, we also have present with us, uh, Ken, do you wanna introduce yourself and, and what your role is, Ken, maybe? Sure, Ken Guyette, I'm senior director with Collier's Project Leaders. We're the owner's project manager. Great, thank you. Um, so in terms of, um, oh, let's see, my computer is going slowly. The agenda. Can someone help me in find showing the agenda or talking about the agenda? Yeah, so first up, Paul, is officer elections. Um, and I've, I've heard from uh, 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 committee members that they are concerned about um, uh, uh, electing a chair at this point. They'd like to wait until after the, um, the, the building committee itself has been formed fully. Okay. Um, yeah, so is, go ahead. Nope, go ahead. So that, that's an option for us um, by role of my my ex officio role, my role here, I could continue to run the meetings. It's up to the, the committee how it would like to proceed. Um, any other thoughts from any members? Any, Austin? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think we should, uh, we should wait, Paul. Okay, good. And Christine? Um, I also think that's a good idea. I was just, and part of that reason is they were still down a member, the other yep. resident. And I was, um, I don't know if that's on the agenda, but at some point, if we could get an update on where that's at, because I feel that that person is critical. I don't want them to feel like they're like, you know, not, not vital. Yeah. Yeah. Got that. So I can update you. So we're hoping to get all the as many appointments as we can to the town council by the January 24th meeting. So um, typically, and I think that that should be possible. There's, there, we have some more interviewing to do. We have interviewed some candidates, but there are other candidates who have expressed interest. Um, we had some glitches with one of the candidates who could not connect. So um, we'll be moving that forward. So. And let's see. The we're going to go to finance up or minutes for 12, 14, 21. And we for this meeting, I think we will just we'll ask for a motion to send seconded. Did, did we get did everybody get the cop, copy of the minutes? We did. Okay, uh, we'll ask for a motion in a second, but we can talk about how we want to address those going forward. So would someone like to make a motion on that? 
I'll move to approve the minutes of January 14th, 2021. December 14th. That, that too. It says January yeah. 14th on the agenda. So I'm, I'm reading not, that. <laughs> we, 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 fi we fixed that after the fact, but yes. <laughs> That's what I get for reading the agenda. <laughs> but we can do next week's or Friday's agenda. <laughs> Friday's agenda. All good. Okay. Is I'll there a second? second? Okay, Christine, great. Thank you. So we'll go roll call vote. Uh, Sharon? Approved. Okay. This is to a vote to approve the minutes as presented. George? Approved. Christine? Approved. Uh, Sean? Approved. Uh, Alex? Approved. And Austin? Yeah, approve. Great. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is a finance update, I believe. And Sean, are you going to take that? Yeah, so there's um, so there's not much to update. I can review if anybody wants to review. There really have not been many changes um, other than we've made progress with the contract for Colliers. I don't know, Ken, do we have a fully executed contract yet? Yes, we have a fully executed okay. C proposal, which is just an extension of our existing contract. So, so, we're, so we're that's probably the most important update is that we, we have the OPM on board for this next phase of the um, of the project. And now we will turn our attention to doing the same thing with the designer. Um, and we hope to get that done within the next week or so. And I mean, they have to submit a proposal to us. We haven't received the proposal from them um, yet that I know of, Ken, right? Nothing yet? That's correct. Yeah, okay. we've just solicited as of yesterday. We reached okay. out to uh, Feingold Alexander to get that proposal. Yeah, so the next big step will be getting them under the same agreement. Um, to, to extend their agreement to go through the rest of the project and then we'll dive you know head first into design um, development and working with them on that so um, if there's any questions or if people want me to review the financing up until this point i'm happy to do that i know we have some new member or at least one new member so i'm happy to go over what i went over last time as well if it's if it's useful uh, alex Sorry, too many things to click. Yeah, I just wanted yeah. to follow up. I know, um, Sean, you had said that you were talking to the financial advisor mm -hmm. uh, for the town and you were yep. waiting for hard numbers before you could commit to which option. Right. So I don't know if that's, I don't know whether that's just more yeah. updated, how so, much that really impacts our decision making, but I was just- So why don't, I, why don't I do a quick refresher or do an update, yeah. a, a review of what I talked about last time. And um, so what I said last time is that there's a couple of different ways we can finance this project. We can finance it. So there's the two major funding sources are um, the town's share of this, the, the amount we're going to borrow um, and pay back from our capital funds. And then there is the um, MBLC grant share, which is the other major share. And there's other funding sources as well, private donations and, and CPA funds. Um, but the grant and the town share are the two uh, largest contributions. Um, and the way the grant funds work are we have five milestones we have to hit. They give us a roughly 20% of the grant every time we hit those milestones. Um, and one of the milestones was as simple as signing the contract. So we already have um, two point something million um, that's sitting in an interest bearing account um, generating some, some additional funds. And so we have a decision about whether we wanna use the grant funds for eligible project costs first, exhaust those funds first, um, and then use town funds last, essentially. Um, or we can use town funds first, let the grant funds accumulate as we hit those milestones and use them last. Um, the benefit of using the grant funds first is that we don't have to go out and borrow money. We can wait as long as possible to borrow money. Um, and, and it also pushes back when we have to, you know, our first payment is due, it pushes that farther into the future. Um, the downside of that is right now interest rates are really low and are they're, they're going to ticking up a little bit, but they're they're still really low compared to where they've been in the past. Um, and so if we were to use town funds first by borrowing in the next six months or so, um, we would be able to lock in a low interest rate. We could start paying on the town share earlier, meaning it would get done sooner. Um, and then the other major benefit is those grant funds continue to sit in an interest bearing account generating interest. And I, I did a rough estimate. Um, you know, we could generate north of thirty thousand dollars or so in interest over the over the um, amount of time that they're sitting there before we would have to use them, and then we could put that money back into the project to reduce the cost to the town. So, so we're sort of leaning towards that option right now. And we're, again, I'm working with the financial advisor to model out what that looks like. We're, we're leaning towards that option. 
Some of that depends on the timeline for the project and the cash flow, which is what we've been working on with Ken and Colliers, because if we we can't, depending on what share we use first, we still have to make sure that we are in a position to spend that money within a certain period of time. So if we were to borrow money, let's say this June for the town share, we have to make sure that the there's costs that will come within the next 12 to 24 months to use that money. Um, so we just, the cash flow is an important piece of the financing as well. Um, so all that's to say, we're working very closely with our financial advisor, working with Ken to choose the financing option that will ultimately, I think, have the, the lowest overall cost of the town. Um, and given our other, given our other projects that we know are on the radar, the schools, the fire station, the DPW, it's not necessarily a bad thing to, to start this sooner rather than later, because those are coming in the future too. And we don't want them all to hit in the same year, because that would be a big increase all at once. Um, so trying to space these out and getting one of these projects started in terms of paying back the debt on the project, um, is helpful for planning and for spreading it out. Any questions on all that? Sorry, sort of rambly. All right, that's the finance update. Great, thank you, Sean. Um, now we go on to sort of next steps and I'm gonna turn it over to Ken and I appreciate you being here. Ken, I know you're traveling all over Western Massachusetts today. Mm -hmm. So appreciate your efforts to be with us. And that was really no important for us to see you. Um, so do you wanna just, I mean, Many, most people here have never been on a building committee, don't really understand what your role is and how you're gonna guide us through the process, but it's it's a, the OPM is a really important role. Uh, a lot of you guys have worked with Ken pre, you know, for many, for a while, quite some time now and has guided us really expertly along the path. But uh, for those of us who don't, could you just sort of describe what your role is and what the next steps look like for us? Sure, thanks, Paul, I appreciate that. Um, Absolutely. So we, as owners project managers, we are essentially uh, an extension of your staff, uh, a technical expertise that we bring uh, regarding, you know, large capital projects um, through all, all the phases of, of those projects from inception all the way through closeout. So we're going to be working hand in glove with this committee, with additional staff uh, in town, the procurement agent, Sean, et cetera. Uh, to ensure that the project and the process moves uh, swiftly and expeditiously, and you get the the project that was um, that was desired really early on um, in, in this process, and then you get a a project that's high quality on on time and and obviously on budget, if not under budget. And so um, it's going to be you know a, a long process. Uh, it's already been a long process. Um, we're kind of at the midpoint right now, basically, uh, to begin the design process in earnest going forward. So our initial next step is to do just that, to bring the design team on board and get them under contract for the balance of the work, which is uh, the design phase, the bid phase, the construction phase, and then the closeout phase of the project. Uh, and that's what we've been doing. So yesterday, uh, I've been corresponding with, uh, with Ellen um, Ancelone from, from Fine Gold Alexander. And uh, we're working through getting a proposal from them. Um, I have a call with her scheduled for tomorrow to um, try to truncate the time that they're looking for to, to get their proposal back out to us. They're looking for two weeks. We'd like to see that turn around much quicker if possible. But uh, again, understanding that they've been kind of waiting in the wings, um, I'm trying to give them a little bit of, uh, a little bit of grace here when it comes to uh, putting that proposal together. So that's going to be the next really big milestone is to get them under contract. And then from there, um, we're going to work to put together a macro project schedule, which is a real big uh, high level schedule showing large chunks of time, um, schematic design, design development, contract documents, bid phase, et cetera, in large chunks. And then from that, we're going to make a milestone schedule along with input from not only the town, but also from the design team to take those big chunks of time and break them into individual tasks with individual dates to ensure that every little milestone that we have to hit within those large chunks of time ultimately hit so we don't miss the big milestones. And so there's gonna be a lot of dates, there's gonna be a lot of tasks, there's gonna be a lot of things that we're gonna be um, going back and forth with the design team on to ensure that we're going to hit everything that we need to hit so we hit the milestones and again, make, make sure we maintain our schedule because especially in this climate, time is money. And so we wanna make sure that we're being as efficient and effective as possible. 
So that's really kind of the next large couple of steps. We're gonna work again with the building committee to give uh, pass along all that information to you. Uh, we inform the committee, you all make the decisions. So um, we're here to, to basically, uh, again, be your eyes and ears and to give you all the information you need to, to make your decisions effectively. Um, and so um, whatever you need from us, that's what we're here for. And uh, we're gonna continue to, to, to push the project along as quickly as possible. Thanks, Paul. Austin. Uh, Paul and Ken, just a clarification question. Do we, does the building committee need to take any action as a building committee on Feingold Alexander's proposal? Or is that uh, something that uh, you and Sean and the town people will kind of take care of? So uh, that's totally up to, to you all. I think Paul and Sean, I think we had talked about, um, you know, we'll solicit the uh, the proposal. We'll review the proposal, make sure it meets the, the, the contract requirements, make sure that the, the cost, again, we're going to negotiate back and forth with Pine with Alexander a bunch of times, I'm sure, to get the number down to where it's manageable and within the budget. And then from there, we'll present to whoever we need to present to. If it's if it's Sean and Paul or the, the committee as a whole, it's, it's totally up to you all. So, so I think typically the choice of the architect would be something that the building committee would be involved with the actual uh, negotiation of the, the fee. It would be something that the, the contracting authority, which is the town manager would typically do. That's yeah. how I think we would divide it. So it, I think we're moving forward with fine, fine gold Alexander, unless there's somebody on the committee who'd like to deviate from that. Austin. I wanna deviate from it. I just want, I just wondered Paul, maybe it's obvious whether or not it would be helpful to kind of put on the record that the committee as a whole is endorsing this choice. That's what, that's what my question is. In other words, would it be helpful, do you think, uh, for the committee to vote, yeah. you know, to support whatever it is for Fungal Alexander? So I think, I think that might make sense. Maybe at our next meeting, we bring back the proposal, you know, the agreed upon proposal from Feingold Alexander, present it to the committee, and ask for a vote of the committee. That's that's totally fine as well, and it sort of it does clarify things. I think for everybody, because this is a new body that's just meeting for the second time. Yeah. So what we'll have to do on behalf of the committee and behalf of the town is we'll have to give uh, Feingold Alexander a notice to proceed, which is essentially a, a contractual notice to proceed. To move forward in this next phase um, based on their current contract. So um, that would be great. That would work out well. Okay, we can do that. What other questions do people have for Ken? Christine. I just have one about, um, I know there's a lot of setup in the beginning, Ken, with all these um, schedules, but as we start to roll forward, how do we get the information from you all, like is a report form that we can then utilize for outreach or um, just our own knowledge? Would that be like a monthly, I'm guessing? Because we have to report for quarterly. I see that in our charge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a great question. So there's going to be a variety of different formats you're going to be able to choose from. So there's going to be typically a monthly report that we're going to give that's going to, especially during the design phase, it gets into into more reporting as we get into construction because there's daily reports, there's weekly reports, and then that all rolls up into a monthly report uh, for reporting on, on construction activity. But during the design phase, we'll be giving you all a monthly report that, that opines on the cost, quality, and the schedule of the project, the design phase, services that the architect's performing, et cetera, any other consultants that we need to bring on board outside of the design team. Mm -hmm. But also beyond that, we will be putting this project into our, um, our Collier's 360 uh, web-based program management uh, system software, which is for the, the town to use. I mean, if you have a web browser, you can go on there and see where we're at with budget, where we're at with schedule, meeting minutes, everything that you need to know will be there uh, on, that, on that portal uh, that you can grab any information that you want. And as we start getting closer to uh, any sort of community outreach that needs to happen, we'll obviously make sure that we've got uh, Fine Gold Alexander queued up for that with any sort of renderings or models or anything that we need to make sure that we're, we're getting that information out to everybody and keeping everybody well informed of what's going on. Sean. Ken, what, what is the, um, 
like the flow of the meetings? How often should we be meeting? When is there a lot of work for the committee? Um, I, I, like with the MSBA process with the school side, like it's very prescribed and there's key steps and it's sort of very regimented. So you know exactly how often you need to meet or, or what's coming up. What, what are some of the, for this committee, what are some of the big things coming up and how often should we be meeting? Yeah, so that's a good question, Sean. So I think early on here, I think what we should probably do is, is figure on a, a meeting. It'd be nice to have a meeting every two weeks. And then if we can back off from that and just meet monthly if we need to, that's really the, 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 the best kind of um, cadence that we could have for the meetings is monthly. But early on, we're going to have a lot to talk about until we get into that rhythm. And it would be good to set, kind of set that up in, in uh, two-week intervals for now. Um, and then start spreading that out a little bit. But um, we'll get into that cadence, we'll get into that rhythm. It'll be, again, it'll be a, an overview of what the design team has been doing. Obviously they'll give a presentation on where they're at with any new design that's happened. We'll obviously have conversations about um, uh, the schedule and where we're at with the schedule, uh, costs. We'll give a budget overview if it's, if it's, uh, if it's requested. Again, uh, whatever level of detail that the committee wants, we'll be able to provide that. And, it can change. It'll change. It'll likely change as we start going through the process where you guys will be like, well, we don't need that much information or can you give us a little bit more information on certain aspects of the project? And so we're going to give you everything we have at first and then let you guys tell us to back off if we need to back off. Great. Thank you. Other questions or comments on the OPM process? Yeah, yeah, I just can just, I this. And Amherst, I don't think we will ever say you've given us too much information. So, well, I, yeah, Paul, I honestly, I was just going to say, am I on an Amherst call? Because it cannot be this easy that these questions are coming at me right now. I mean, I just, <laughs> I have not been on a call yet where it's been this, uh, this easy. So, we're just warming up. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so one of the things that came based on Sean's questions is we as a committee need to decide how frequently we. We want to meet. I think every two weeks seems to be. That's what the uh, school building project is doing. That makes sense for us. We will need to locate a time and day that works for everyone, including the OPM, um, because that's really important. That 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 can be available. And I know he's got other things in his on his uh, professional um, diet as well. So um, should maybe uh, let's see. How do we want to do that? Ken, do you want to give us some, are you off the books at any part, parts of times? I don't want to go through this. We, we'll probably do this through a doodle poll or something like that. But um, if you can just sort of sure. give us some general comments, some general framework. Yeah, so so generally, um, you know, in the, in the position I'm in, I can, I can make whatever time is convenient for the committee work. Uh, obviously, I would prefer um, during the day if possible, but if it has to be at night, that's all right too, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, We'll, we'll make whatever we need to make work. Okay. So I think what we'll do after this meeting is, oh, Alex, good. Yeah, and you may be about to say this, Paul. I just wanted to suggest that maybe we set the next meeting and then once we have the full complement of the committee at that yeah. next meeting, then we set a schedule so that everybody's schedule is, I think Anika's thinking the same thing, yeah. Yeah, okay. So what would, what's the pleasure of the committee for next meeting? Do you wanna do two days, two weeks from today at the same time? Nika, that works for you? Austin, it does not work for you. No, I have a, I have a commitment that day at uh, 4.30. Okay. Sorry. Do you wanna make another bid? Oh, uh, sure. Um, how about the 27th at 4.30? Me. Thursday at 27th? At, at 4 or 4.30, or does it matter, Austin? Uh, 4.30 is a little better. For me, okay. if, it, if it works. Okay. What about the twenty seventh at four thirty? I'm I'm looking for heads shaking. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That our next meeting will be Thursday, January twenty seventh at four thirty, and on that meeting, 
agenda, we will have the architects um, update. We'll have the update from, from Ken. Um, what else would you like to have on that agenda? We'll definitely have a schedule update for everybody by then as schedule. well. Schedule, yeah. Alex? Yeah, I know on here we talked about subcommittees and yeah. I guess, I don't know if I'm jumping the gun, but I would love to hear from Ken sort of if there are typical, I mean, I don't know if there's typical ones and then there are special Amherst ones, but I don't know if we want to talk about that today, but then again, I would love to have the full complement of the committee before we really yep. commit to anything, but I hate to keep dragging all of this out. Yeah, so th there typically are, um, whether they're called subcommittees or working groups, there, there are some typical um, groups that, that meet outside of the building committee. Typically there will be a representative at least from the building committee um, as part of those working group sessions, whether it's uh, on the, you know, the interior design of the facility, whether it's on um, just design in general, which goes from the exterior to the interior to the landscaping, et cetera, et cetera. Um, just working through the architects on that design that still needs to cook for the project. Um, there are other, you know, there's obviously sustainability uh, working groups that, that could be part of this. Um, it's really at the pleasure of the committee on, on again, how much information they want to have to go through at each of the committee meetings, or would they prefer that a lot of that legwork is done on a subcommittee or a working group and then they would report back to the overall committee. I know the um, building sub, the elementary school building committee is looking at two subcommittees, one for net zero and one for outreach. So we might wanna think about an outreach committee as well. So Sharon. Yeah, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm mostly concerned right now with a, a design subcommittee, um, you know, assuming we get Feingold Alexander on board, I'd really like to hit the ground running with that. Um, certainly the outreach piece, I think that's necessary. Um, uh, but regarding the net zero subcommittee, I, I don't think we need that only because we've already got four experts in that field that have done the work and then um, and so they're still in place, willing to help us. So um, I just want to throw that out there. Mm -hmm. See, uh, George. Um, another suggestion would probably be uh, the search for the offsite. Uh, you know, the temporary location. Uh, that's that's going to be something that's going to hit us early on. And it's probably going to take a lot, a lot of legwork. And I don't know if the entire committee would be needed for that so that mm -hmm. that'd probably be another suggestion good that's idea. a good one george and the reason for that is that uh, uh the library has to maintain its services throughout the construction project um so it's that's a mandate and so that's why it's so important we can't just shut down and say we're not offering services for during the entire construction period so it's an important feature and and it, it needs to be able to ser available to the public, but also serviceable by the tech, by the uh, library staff. Okay, Alex. I don't know whether we need to do anything around the historic aspects or whether that's all gonna be sort of driven or whether there's any, so I don't know whether that's a subcommittee that makes any sense since it's such a big piece of the building project is the, it depends on whether or not we could pull that through with the design subcommittee. It, it, it depends. If that needs to be something that's um, specific to that aspect, then we can absolutely, you know, adapt to that when the time comes when we really start getting into. But that's something, again, that can start up, ramp up, and then ramp back down to once we've gotten our blessings from the Historical Commission. You know? Good. Hey, Christine. Um, so that good point that the some of the historic stuff either is taken care of by the um mb um the massachusetts the grant or if it was um if it i guess what i'm saying is there also could be the sustainability issues that get rolled into the design stuff and i guess where i was 
thinking there's a concern is, you know, we don't want to get too heavy on number of subcommittees. And Paul, what does it mean when we get a subcommittee? Like, do, do they have to go through the process, what we're doing now, like people get brought on, they have to get sworn in. It's a whole nother meeting that like, how much of a load does that become? So, yeah, so anybody created by this committee is also a public body subject to the open meeting law. Um, and under the terms of the charter, the town manager appoints these. So one way of doing it is to make the subcommittee of members here and then inviting people to participate uh, who are who might be outside experts, but they're not they aren't a committee members, but they're part of the the thinking process. But it, they would but even if, if it's a committee of two out of this group, it's still a public meeting posted and all that stuff. We just don't have to go through any kind of appointment process other than what this body just decides to do, dividing up its staff. Sure. And in that respect, okay. it may be beneficial to, to look at that as a working group then instead of a subcommittee. Again, it's up to the committee and how they want to work it. Yeah, so working group and subcommittee is it's an it's indistinguishable terms. It's okay. still a committee, yeah. <laughs> People like to say, oh, that's not the subject to the open meeting law, but they are. Um, so, Sean? I was just gonna say, I don't disagree with Sharon on the sustainability, um, the people. I think there's experts that have been working with the project. I do think yeah. it might make sense to connect them to this building committee in a formal way, whether it's you know a subcommittee and then they're the, the residents that support that committee. I just think we will wanna have some sort of we want to fold it into our process somehow instead of floating out there as a separate process, um, sort of a separate group. So this is a group the trustees established, right? Like Alex, you have your hand up. You want to talk about yeah, this? Yeah, I was going to say. So they're they're an existing um, committee that are appointed. They have a charge. Um, yeah, I'm actually a member of it. Mm -hmm. I'm the least educated member. I take the notes mostly. <laughs> I try not to mess it up. But yeah, so it is already. So I don't know how we weave it in but mm -hmm. they're all already sworn in and mm -hmm. doing their thing that's a beautiful thing that's good so let's put this on the, uh, the topic of subcommittees okay austin so paul this raises a question um that uh i think is easily resolved but i just want to ask it so the sustainability committee was appointed by the board of trustees of the library so my question is, what is the way in which you would see that, and maybe this is what Sean, you were talking about, becoming part of the work of this um, committee, since it's a committee that's appointed by, responsive to the board of trustees. Uh, how, do we, how do we kind of straighten out the line of communication, if you will, between that committee with its appointment and its charge and um and in, in this committee i don't have an easy answer to that Mr. can you sean. tell by the way that i studied constitutional law yeah i love it um sean do you have any thoughts on that i mean if there's a way to amend the charge or shift make some adjustment to who the group reports to i, I think i get why that body was set up before this committee was um yeah. constructed but now that this committee is on this path forward i think it makes sense for them to be making those updates to this committee and working with this committee on those things because we're going to be seeing designs and looking at the budget and and so all this all their work is going to impact the things we're going to do um, i know the trustees obviously have a heavy um stake in this as well so i don't know if there's a way where they can report to both or if they can just again liaise with a subcommittee that we create and and then you know alex is on that committee already so maybe she could bring back um but i do think it's somehow we should try to align those um, those streams uh, that they're working with us. Alex. So the only thing, yeah, I'm all for that, but just to let you know, Sean, so the sustainability committee's charge is the, the building project is a piece, but there's okay. an educational piece. There's gotcha. a, like, a much bigger committee than this is just, it's been their primary focus obviously for now, but it's not the, the totality of their charge. So just put that out there like we don't want to like stop their other work um yeah so again one way to do it would be we just form a subcommittee and those members become those sort of advisors like paul talked about these committees will have advisors they could just be the same group of you know be the advisors for our subcommittee and so that way there's consistency between the two and we don't have to mess around with um you know changing what they're already doing sounds good so, so 
um, I'll put, we can put this on the, as an agenda item, like subcommittees as a, that we can talk, think of through what we think is the best. What are the topics we think we need subcommittees on? And we don't have to be capture them all uh, uh, at the next meeting, but we can say what are the most urgent ones that we want and um, how, we how we want to set them up and have some ideas on that. So, okay, moving forward. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, so we talked about regular meeting schedule. I don't there are, is there anything else on the agenda that the committee wanted to touch base on? We have um, public comment as well to, to do on today. Any other topics that I'm missing? Okay, so now I'll open it up to public comment. Public comment is, is a time for um, members of the public to raise their hand and make a comment. Uh, the committee members don't respond to comments. We are here to listen to you. Um, we, I ask you to, when you're brought into the room, that you uh, try to keep your uh, comments to under three minutes, and uh, I'll identify you and ask you to come in. Uh, so I see, so who's hosted? Who's hosting? Am I? Yeah, so uh, Hilda Greenbaum can bring you in to the room. Hey, Hilda, if you want to unmute yourself, you're in the room and you can speak. Okay. Um, you you want to see my picture too? No. It's <laughs> Other people might want to see since we have that option. We wish that other people would allow. allow us to know who's in the audience but anyway um my husband and i have been following the architectural meetings for at least the past five or six years when he was still alive and today i read the report for, of the historical structure and i have to tell you it was like reading an obituary so my question in that context is how much of the design is just pro forma for the grant purpose or how much of that is already cast in stone? How much input will town citizens have in, in the final design of the project? I am not against the project. I will begin with that right there, but I am unhappy with the design both the interior and the exterior. And I, I know one of the things that I noted most about that is that that interior woodwork was 18% of the budget at the time the building was built. They found that it was very important. And I thought that we learned in the 1960s when we tore down a lot of our heritage in the inner cities that we need to save our heritage and I would like that to be taken seriously in the final designs. And so my question is how much is of what you've already put in the design phase locked in and how much of the details can be amended by public input or in reference to public input? Thank you, Hilda. So I'm sure that we'll bring those questions to the designer and there'll be ample opportunity to pose questions to the designers when we have our public outreach. And you did mention something I wanted to, I meant to say at the beginning is that people like to know how many people are in the audience. So we have nine people in the audience in addition to the people who are, who you see, well, not ex uh, other than Hilda who are on the screen right now. So there are nine people in the audience. Thank you, Hilda, for your time. Anytime, I am always willing to talk. Yeah, <laughs> uh, let's see. I'll turn myself off if you okay. want to. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to move you back into the, without. You, you got to click her name in the oh, panelists oh, list. The panelists, right, that's yeah. where it is. I always, I always forget that too. Yeah, okay, are there other, let me just do this first. Okay, other comments that people from the public would like to make? Okay, I don't see any other hands up. 
So we'll conclude that item on the agenda. Um, the last item on the agenda is topics not anticipated 48 hours in advance. And there is one topic that I would like to bring up. Um, during the meeting, we were informed that um, there was a decision in the court case that was outstanding. Um, and I'll try it. I, don't, I haven't read it, honestly, obviously, because it just came in. Um, but I've been informed that the Superior Court has issued a decision ruling in favor of the town on all remaining claims in this action, and it denied the plaintiff's request to amend the complaint to add new claims. So I will share that out. That'll be a public document, obviously. So that came out from at least from our town attorney during the course of this meeting. So I just want to share that that a decision has been issued by the by the court. So panelists, I can see your name up. Uh, Anika. There you are. Could you repeat what you just said? I had just some static going on. I could sure. I'm trying to like manage some screens here. Um, so um, our town attorney has written an email saying, I'm pleased to inform you that the Superior Court has issued a decision ruling in favor of the town on all remaining claims in this action, meaning the case of Allen versus Board of Registrars. And it denied the plaintiff's request to amend the complaint to add new claims. Um, so. It will there'll be more detail in the actual decision so but it's good news from the town's point of view it's good news thank you mm -hmm. any other items that um people want to raise under new business or like items not anticipated otherwise we'll see each other on january 27th at 4 30 p.m it will be by zoom Thanks, everybody. Thank you all. Take care. Bye-bye.